Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to our presentation, uh, program review and overview of libraries. And you can see here, we're going to sort of talk about libraries uh, as a whole system, not going to talk about a specific library. And libraries have been around for hundreds of years. They provide free access to knowledge. They empower people and provide the tools for them and the resources for them to be successful. And I know that uh, when I first came to Canada, uh, I used the library internet because I didn't have a computer. Um, in the picture that you're looking at, this is the Carnegie Center. This is Vancouver's first library in 1905. Andrew, Andrew Carnegie was a philanthropist and he funded libraries across North America. And he gave a famous speech in the 1880s, linking libraries to strong, strong democracy. I'm not sure how true that is, but since then, this has always been kind of the standard discourse uh, for libraries that they support democracy. And then what else can we say about Dewey, Thomas? Well, uh, he created the uh, Dewey Decimal System in 1876. Um, he was also involved in Daniel. What did you mention earlier about? Uh, uh, well, he supported um, education for librarians in 1884 as well. Mm. Mm. Yes, so he's he's been a strong advocate for this for libraries. And remember uh, that Carnegie was a steel magnate. He was yes, he's a capitalist. Yeah. So we're going to yeah, talk so about yeah. how capitalism <laughs> influences libraries. Absolutely. So I've always enjoyed libraries. It's a place where everyone can get together and access knowledge and the skills and entertainment and just basically things that make life worth living and, and fun. Also, they're cozy and warm in winter. They provide a cheap night out for a young family. And in my opinion, in our opinion, they do uh, encourage growth and development and they can prepare people for work. So we're gonna look at some of the programs the libraries offer later on. But as I was telling Thomas uh, earlier on, I'm not really sure if they are out there to promote a civil society as such. What do you reckon, Thomas? Well, I, I know that, that libraries and places of learning have uh, for a long time been used as tools of uh, changing people's minds such as the Civil War, such as the War of 1812, and the push towards democracy have all been part of that whole idea of yeah. libraries and learning. Yeah, good. So the root of the word library, a lot of people think that, you know, library and liberty is, is kind of connected somehow, with freedom. But the root of the word is actually um, from Latin, which is um, liber, which means bark from a tree. And uh, from there we get books. But Ramesses, the Egyptian king, had a library back in 1200 BC. And what you're looking at here is the uh, library in Switzerland from the Middle Ages. You can actually visit this just outside of Zurich. Uh, this library has a collection of books that are over a thousand years old. Pretty impressive, right? Well, and when you look at it, it's a virtually a temple to books and knowledge if you could keep knowledge in a building, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it looks a little bit colonialistic, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but check out um, Halifax Public Library. And uh, we were talking earlier on how the service model of libraries have changed dramatic dramatically over the past 20 years. There's a whole different way of doing things now, especially when Thomas, you know, since Thomas was young, right, Thomas? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, why do you think governments put so much energy into the architecture of libraries? Well, I mean, it would be because of uh, the, more, the more happy you are with your civil structures and the beauty of your city, the more happy you're going to be with your government, right? Yeah, I think so too. Votes, yeah. votes. votes but, yeah. but libraries have gone from being book centered to more community centered now. And uh, we were talking earlier on about San Francisco Library. They even have staff members trained to assist homeless people uh, to help them look for resources when they come into the library. And we could have a discussion 
about homeless people in libraries later on. <laughs> well, not, but, a, not, a, not only to mention that, but I mean, in libraries, we have librarians, books, adult and child literacy, computer, internet literacy, uh, yeah. day camps. Like there's so many things that happen in a library. And if you want to learn anything in any direction, just ask a librarian. Yeah, exactly. Libraries don't care uh, where you came from or how much money you earn. And it's basically a people a place where people can gather and socialize. So what are we looking at here, Thomas? This is the Calgary Airport. I Calgary, people, Calgary I, Library. I, library, right. <laughs> Calgary Library. I'm, 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 I'm overheated right now. I'm not used to recording myself. Right <laughs> but this is the Calgary Public Library. I know, I know many people who worked and built that. And a funny note about it is they built it over the C train, which is Calgary's light transit. And so you'll be riding along and you'll duck down and you'll go underneath the library. And mm -hmm. finally, they're starting to use the land in Calgary in a proper manner. But anyways, I digress. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so when we were practicing for this little presentation, we were um, discussing whether libraries are advocates for social activism or you know society transformation, or are they just pretty much um, keeping the status quo. I mean, they have intellectual freedom. That's one of their missions and visions that they have their intellectual freedom. So for example, if I wanted to book a room and talk about a controversial subject, I could, as long as within it's within Canadian law. But libraries are funded by governments. And uh, in my opinion, and maybe in Thomas's opinion as well, oh, I agree. Uh, their job is to maybe support the political narrative because that's where they get their funding from and uh, in my opinion education is never neutral uh, good education is never neutral uh, there should be some opinions so i'm not sure if libraries are um, out there to transform or you know change society as much what do you think but at the same time i mean what like transformational okay so you read a book it transforms your mind transforms your way of thinking mm -hmm. isn't, yeah. isn't that transformational so uh, could on, be on the, on the diagram that is that furthest to the right or furthest to the left I think it's what's that transformation on the Venn diagram remember there were the three circles oh yes yeah Not, anyways but uh, ironically library attendance actually increases during recessions and depressions so we saw this in the 1930s and uh, 2008 and we might even see it now as well well my my concern is after all the cost savings of not having to keep the whole building warm <laughs> they may not <laughs> yeah. be that'd be terrible yeah. i love holding a book in my, my hands i read so much faster with a book anyways go ahead <laughs> yes so uh as i mentioned uh libraries can avoid taking sides in the, in the political spectrum there. And uh, in my opinion, they are a little bit of a reproduction of the status quo. And, um, you know, people say they're a cornerstone of the community, but really what is our community made of? What background do we have? I mean, we have a background of slavery and genocide and, and colonialism. So uh, in the picture here, we have um, New York, reading library which is very beautiful right and it just showcases colonialism right here what do you think uh thomas oh yeah 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 you could you could see it i mean it's of the age of colonialism right so mm -hmm. what is what yeah. is 1780 18 20 or yes. something this library yeah yeah exactly so, right in the middle of it <laughs> yes yeah exactly okay so we're at the yep. 10 minute mark and this presentation is supposed to go for for 10 to 12 minutes mm -hmm. so what we could do now is have a little discussion using our board here and we're going to go around the board and uh we're just going to do this live is that right thomas You're just going to yes, stop the video now to me. Yep. Yep, all right good. so thanks for watching and we'll see you in a minute when we're talking about this live